Reign of Chaos from 2022, directed by Rebecca Matthews and starring Rebecca Finch, Peter Posgrove, Mark Sears, and Georgia Wood. When the world is gripped by a plague and leached by the evil Lord Chaos and humans are turned into rabid creatures, mankind can only be saved by three young women who are descendants of the goddess Nike. Only they have the power to stop Chaos's evil plans. This is a story that has been told countless times, and I'm admittedly a sucker for watching any of them that I come across, so it's no surprise that I jumped at a chance to watch this one. Knowing that it was a low-budget film, I wasn't expecting giant, mind-blowing battles, uh, i.e. the Avengers, or anything even with the Hollywood polish. I was hoping for some creative filmmaking and engaging characters to help make up the discrepancies that middle school budgets tend to create. Unfortunately, what we get in Reign of Chaos is tired tropes, low-key action, and caricatures. I loathe to completely pan any film, much less an independent film, but I have to point out some things that I feel the filmmakers did in this one that they just they should have known better. If you're going to hinge your entire plot on the abilities of your heroes to be a super powerful fighting force, then you should cast some actors with some mad fighting skills. Watching the training montage and seeing the women weakly hitting punching bags and straining to lift what looked like fairly light weights, it was painful. It is such an ineffective collection of scenes that it comes across as exactly what it was, an, ex an excuse to get your attractive actresses into yoga pants and sports bras. All this after they're brought together by a mysterious stranger. A mysterious stranger that looks like he'd be more at home as Torgo from a Man is the Hands of Fate remake than an all-knowing guru that is helping save the world. Chaos and his uh, sons are the only characters that come close to even working, though the processing on the voice wasn't necessary. They're appropriately evil and uncaring about anyone or anything other than their plans to level the world. As I said, I knew going in that this was a well-worn idea, but some effort should have been made to give it an edge. Turning everyone, and when I say everyone, I mean like the four or five people that we actually see besides our actual main cast, into zombies, eh, that wasn't the edge as needed. The one thing they got right on this is the runtime. This mercifully comes in under an hour 20. The sad thing is that it could have easily trimmed another or 20, 30 minutes. I hate to say it, but the only recommendation I can give on this one is to skip it entirely.